Hey guys, so I noticed that some people were having issues with adding the overlays to RetroArch and getting it to play nicely with Rocket Launcher to where when they were loading their games after they put in the bezels slash overlays, they were getting some back and forths between the game. It would start to load the game, it would load the fade, and then it would flash away to a windowed game, and then it would flash back to the fade, and then it would flash back to the game with the bezel on. And I was having that problem for a little while too, so I decided to dive into it a little further and fix it. For those that are having that problem, or you just simply want to learn how to put bezels into Rocket Launcher, this is going to show you how to do that specifically for retro arc. As far as normal bezels for other emulators, it's generally pretty easy, but I will be coming out with separate videos for those and handling some of the more difficult systems with getting bezels to work. But for now, we're just going to tackle RetroArch, playing nicely with Rocket Launcher with overlays. So the first thing you need is an actual bezel or an overlay, as RetroArch uses overlays. And you are going to need a program such as GIMP or any image program will do fine as long as you can get measurements from it and resize the picture itself, the bezel itself. And we're going to take this bezel and we're going to drop it into our image manipulation program. And we're going to resize it to a 1080p image if you use 1080p. If you use 720p on your arcade, then you're going to resize it to 1280 by 720. One important thing to note is do not save it in this form. If your bezel or overlay is a higher resolution, which these were, you're not going to want to lower the resolution just to get it to work. You don't have to. This is simply to get proper measurements to fit your screen. You're going to zoom in just so you can get a closer look at the edges. And here we have our left side, which is the left X. And I made a text file here and just named it dimensions. The name doesn't matter. So we're going to open that. And we see horizontal left here. And you're going to take your little arrow here and you're going to watch down in this corner. If you're using GIMP, it's going to give you some numbers. And what you're looking for is you want to get as close to that edge as possible without cutting off any of the game. So you're looking for that first number, 242. And that is your horizontal left. And then you're going to go over to the right side. And here's where it gets a little bit trickier because you're going to take this number, 1677. That is not your horizontal right. We're going to write it down anyways for now, but that is not your number. What you need to do is you need to take a calculator or Windows calculator and you're going to take 1677 and subtract 242. That is your right horizontal, 1435. Because the way RetroArch does its overlays is it will calculate from the left side to the left side X coordinate for this. So that's your first coordinate. And the second coordinate is from the first coordinate to the right side. So it's doing the window size with the second coordinate. So that's why we had to kind of figure it out that way instead. Okay, so 1435 is our horizontal right. So we'll clear that out and we will move on to the verticals, which works exactly the same way. But see, this one is zero because with this particular bezel, it goes all the way to the top of the screen. So we know our first one is zero. We just have to figure out the second one, which goes to the bottom of the screen. So our entire top to bottom for a 1080p resolution, it's going to be 1080. So now we have our measurements here. And I'm just going to save that. And the good thing about all these bezels these RetroArch overlays from Nosh is that they're pretty much all the same size until you get into like handhelds and don't take these numbers exactly because Nosh's bezels do not have this black border on them I added that personally so you're gonna want to go a little bit further out to the edge here when you do your measurements on the sides on the X coordinates 
but that is the measurements that I need in particular for this bezel. Now, we resized it, you're not gonna save it, you're just gonna close out GIMP because if you save it, then it's gonna save that lower resolution and nobody wants lower resolution. Close without saving. Okay, so we close out GIMP. And so now we have our bezel with our measurements and you do not have to change the names at all. You can leave it as is, it's perfectly fine. Now you'll notice when you have this config file that came with the RetroArch bezel and you open it up, it looks nothing like a bezel entry for your run-of-the-mill arcade uh, system that you, that you have a bezel on. It's completely different. So all this information is only used by RetroArch. So when it's time to put the overlay into Rocket Launcher, this means nothing but you keep this file because later on I'm going to show you how you put that into RetroArch and how it actually uses it. can close that out for now. We're going to take this bezel and we're going to move it into our... Rocket Launcher Media Bezels. Now, some people keep it in the RetroArch folder. I don't. I like to keep all my bezels together. So what I did was create a RetroArch overlay folder in my bezels folder in Rocket Launcher. So I keep all of my bezels inside this folder. And you're just going to drag that into there. And don't worry about these dimensions just yet. We'll get to that in a second. But you'll have this with all your other bezels inside this folder. And then now... I'm going to shift over to the arcade and we're going to take it from there and I'll show you how to enter them into the rocket launcher program. Okay, so here we are at my arcade and the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn off, you're going to want to go to your system and you're going to want to turn off bezel in rocket launcher itself. You're going to set that to false because you don't actually want rocket launcher calling the bezel you want RetroArch calling the overlay. And then you're going to go to Module, and you're going to click on Edit Global Module Settings for RetroArch. And you're going to go to the third tab, and you're going to go to where it says Overlay, and you're going to point this towards your configuration file for your overlay. So you just click on the little magnifying glass, and you find your configuration for Nintendo Entertainment System and you're going to select that. You're going to double click it, open. So now you have your config file set in there and then you're going to go to Aspect Ratio Index and you're going to select Custom and then you're going to put in the, the numbers for Custom Viewport Width, Height, X, and Y. So you have your X, your custom viewport X. That's the distance from left to the first left side border. That's this horizontal left. And then you have your custom Y, which is the distance from the top to the first top side border, which is vertical top. And then you have your custom viewport height, which is from the first top border to the bottom border. And that's the 1080 vertical bottom and then you have your custom viewport width which is 1443 now my numbers in my actual rocket launcher do differ slightly but that's because I kind of wanted to stretch my my game past the border slightly because Nintendo games tend to have a black border on the left side and I wanted to eliminate that but I didn't want it to look off-centered so I made mine slightly bigger, but you can follow the measurements here. These will actually work. If you run a 1080p monitor in your arcade system, these measurements right here, you, you can actually copy these number for number into your rocket launcher settings for this system. And if you use the Nosh bezels, then you can copy them into all of the console ones. But keep in mind that the handheld systems will use different measurements, so you're not going to want to put these settings in for that. Once you do these settings, that's it for the Nintendo system. So you don't have to do anything else here. What you're going to want to do next is go to games. And you're going to notice mine's going to have a bezel. But when you start up at this point, you will not see an overlay. You specifically have to go in and start up your game. You can do it in Rocket Launcher or outside of Rocket Launcher or whatever you want to do. And you have to go to the RetroArch menu. 
You're going to go to the second settings menu here. And you're going to go down to on-screen overlay. And you're going to want to turn this on right here. Display overlay. It's going to be off. You're going to want to turn it on. And then over here, you're going to see overlay preset. You're going to go into that. And you're going to search for your rocket launcher folder. You're going to go into media. You're going to go into bezels. If you have it set up like mine, that is. You're going to go into RetroArch overlays. And you're going to find that overlay for the system. And once you have it, you're just going to select that. And then you're going to back out. And you're going to quit RetroArch. Now, when you load up RetroArch the next time, you should have your bezel and it should be fitting in there. And it should be a smooth transition from your front end through the fade to the game itself. And the same situation works with if you're using handhelds such as Game Boy. You're going to want to make sure that you put in the proper distance for the bezels themselves. So you're going to go all the way from the left side of the screen to that first border where your game starts on the left. And then you're going to go from that first border where your game starts on the left to the right border where your game ends for your measurements. Just the same as every other bezel. And then you're going to put in those measurements for that particular system. Now, one thing I want to talk about before I'm done here. I noticed a problem when I was streaming one day and it was putting the Genesis bezel on Sega CD or vice versa. And so I thought, hey, I messed up. I put the wrong bezel, so I went into RetroArch and switched the overlay config to the proper system. So now I had Sega CD bezel on Sega CD and Sega Genesis on Sega Genesis. And I figured everything was fine, but it wasn't, and all I did was just swap it. So now I had the opposite, where Sega CD was on Genesis now. And I looked into that issue as well. So anybody having that issue, this is the problem with that. You go into your... RetroArch folder and you go into the cores file and you'll notice that let's say Genesis Plus okay so you have your Genesis Plus GX libretro DLL file and when you use these systems here such as Sega Master System Sega Genesis Game Gear I believe did the same thing and Sega CD and you use Genesis Plus GX on all of those systems, it's only gonna use one particular overlay for those systems. So what I did was I just took the LibRetro cores and added a couple letters. I made copies of the core and added a couple letters to it. And that way, each system has its own. You don't have to call it GXCD or GXGG. That's just how I keep track of it. There's Game Gear, Sega CD, and Sega Master System. And then I go into the actual system module, and then I'll edit it here under Sega CD, where it says LibRetro Core. And I'll put in that particular one, so GXCD for that LibRetro Core. And if you want to keep the settings that you had, you can just copy the config file as well and do the same thing. And that made it really simple. And then all I had to do was just go into RetroArch after that for those systems that I had to do that with and set the overlay the way it's supposed to be. And now they each have the proper overlay. And I found that problem, just as a heads up to people, I found that problem with a few systems on here, such as Neo Geo Pocket and Pocket Color. We're using the same one. The Genesis systems, of course. The Nintendo Entertainment System and the Famicom and the Famicom Disk System. So you can see that it, it, it was kind of using one configuration file because they were using the same core. If you use different cores for the systems, then it won't do it. But each core has its own configuration file. And you're going to want to make sure that you keep those separate. And it doesn't affect the playability. They all run fine. It's the same exact core. Just a couple of letters are different in there. And it gives them each their own particular settings if I want to set them up differently.
All right, well, that'll cover it. I mean, I hope that that helps out with any issues. I hope it helps set up the bezels and overlays a little easier. I hope it wasn't too confusing. If you haven't set them up yet, this should help you through that. If you have any questions about this, please let me know in the comments. I'm more than happy to help out, especially with anything to do with Rocket Launcher. So to that, I say have a good day.